This is a tale of confusion, conspiracy, betrayal, conflict, and triumph. Hey, it's TK, and this is the story of how I lost and regained my very first battle guild. All right, now to begin with, I want to apologize if this video is a day late. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you, uh, you'd see that I had a lot of issues uh, when I first recorded this yesterday. Uh, for starters, uh, when I switched all my, my uh, OBS settings over to stream on kick, um, for some reason it changed a lot of my audio settings. So I was only recording audio into my left, into the, like, the left ear. Um, and then obviously... I, I had gameplay footage, but for some reason that stuffed up as well. So this time I'm just going to do face-to-face. -face. Uh, I promise more videos in the future won't all be face-to-face. -face. There will be gameplay in, in the background, but I um I just want to make sure that this video gets out on, on time, well, on time, on my postponed time. So <clears throat> as I said, this is a story of how I lost and how I regained my very first WoW Guild. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, I need to set the scene first for this. So basically, I had just gotten back into World of Warcraft and World of the Journal. I had tried it two times in the past, but never like really officially got into it. Um, I had a rogue that I was playing on the Southank server in OCE. Uh, a friend of mine... Um, that I was playing with uh, stopped playing. So I had another friend come over and um, he bought, uh, bought some game time, transferred his character over to my server, and then we started playing. Um, so he had someone to talk to about with WoW. Um, I remember very vividly getting into the guild. I was sitting in the Culling of Strathome dungeon. I was doing the, I was getting the Bronze Drake and doing the Zombie Fest achievement for the glory of the hero. Uh, because I was mount farming at the time, um, which is basically all I knew how to do. Uh, and then suddenly I get a, a whisper from my friend James, who is the League of Legends friend, um, and basically he was like, hey, do you want to join a guild? Now, I had only ever come from playing RuneScape, so there weren't really guilds in RuneScape at the time. Like There were clans, but they didn't really do much other than like chat um, or play clan wars together. So... I was like, what's a guild? His response was basically, lol, get good scrub. Um, I then got a re reply from, uh, a guild invite, sorry, for from someone named Azura, who was the uh, GM for the guild Ironforged. Um, and when I joined, it was just myself, James, Azura, and like two or three other people. So I was like one of the very first founding five members of the guild. Um, so basically when we started off with um it was just us five uh i had literally boosted my character to level 90 because uh my friend that i started playing wow with he told me the wrong server at start so i'd like level to level 40 um and then he's like oh sorry i told you the wrong server so i'm like i'm not gonna do those 40 levels again i'm just gonna boost um so i did that so i was basically level 90 i didn't know how to play the game i didn't know what i was doing so they basically um showed me the ropes and for the first couple of weeks of the guild that's basically all it was was us just playing content together but then they wanted to start growing so uh azura or andy as we later became to know her um made me the um made me the an officer in the guild and you know we were out pounding the pavement in trade chat like day in day out trying to get people we eventually got like 20 to 25 steady people who were always active um there was like a guild merger some somewhere in between there we picked up another smaller guild um but we had about 10 to 15 people who were down to raid and uh, were interesting in raiding um but i'll get into that in a minute uh, i had a lot of fun memories of this guild like i mean when when it was thriving you would jump on and there would be 20 people on at all times and they were always chatting always doing content with each other um you had like people who were always doing dungeons so you would if you wanted to run dungeons you run with them people who were always mound farming like myself if they had like a duo mound farm that you could do you do it with them um there was a lot to do and basically everyone had their own thing 
And if you wanted to try that thing, that person was would be on ready to show you how to do it. Um, so, I mean, there are a ton of people that I remember from the guild, obviously. So you have Paul, who helped me a lot out in my, um, in my early days, and I'll get to that. Um, but you also had people like, you had Susie and her partner, Howdy. Those two were like, probably like some of the closest people I had in the guild. I was always talking to them. They were like the lifeblood of the guild, I, I feel. Um, we had another couple whose names I can't remember correctly because we always refer to each other as username or like nicknames or real names. Um, and theirs was, their real names were Justin and Emily. Um, and uh, they would come into play in the domino effect of things that would destroy the guild, but we'll get into that at a later stage. And then we also had um, a few others. We had Drac, who became my best friend in the guild. Again, he um, uh, he had some issues, but we'll get into that when we get into the rating part. Uh, then we also had a few others. We had Pauldrons, uh, we had Unstubbable, Cow Level, and then, of course, we had Ricky. And Ricky was the final nail in the coffin to how the guild died. But again, I'm getting to that. So yeah, for the first few months, like, um, it was just that, like, we would get on, everyone would be playing, everyone would be doing certain content. If you wanted to do that content, you'd jump in on that. Um, but that being said, we wanted to start raiding as a guild. Um, now, at the time, I was only, like, level 92, so I asked how I could join in the raid, and again, everyone just laughed at me and said, lol, get good scrub. Um, I remember very vividly, they were, like, talking about going into raid that night. Um, I was still 92. I was farming uh, Poseidus for the mount. Like, I was standing at the rare mount spawns, hoping it would spawn. And um, Paul's like, hey, I can, like, boost you to level 100. Um, in like a couple of hours if you want to come come join this group and uh, like meet me here and basically all we did we we did the uh, was it in the grand or Gorgrond it was Gorgrond um, the like he would get you on a two stop uh, two mount fly around all the bonus objectives you do everything other than like one thing and then you chug an XP pot or like the 300 XP pots that existed in the game at the time fly around finish them all off and you like basically hit level 100 i think i had to do like maybe one or two dungeons after to get that level but basically i was level 100 in two or three hours he then spotted me a little bit of gold to go buy some crafted boe gear and i i got whatever the i think it was like i feel like it was like 600 and something item level in um in warlords but i don't remember but it was like very base level walking into high mall um and this is where like these cracks started to show in this guild so basically to paint the picture we were entering into normal high mall when hellfire uh mythic hellfire citadel had been out for like over a year so it was like right at the end of the expansion um we were just waiting for Legion pre-patch to drop like a couple couple months down the line. So like basically in all rights, we just through doing LFR, we should have been geared enough to be able to just walk through High Mall and uh like one shot it. But uh, for some for factors outside of my knowing, uh that wasn't enough. Um uh, that wasn't the case and we weren't geared, so we walked in and um, so the issues began. So to begin with, our GM, Andy, who was a hunter, you can see where this is going already, just saying that. Um, when we were standing around talking about mechanics for a fight, she would get bored and just go and pull the boss and feign death. So we would have to uh, win the fight. Um, or we would have to do the fight without knowing the mechanics. It worked for the first few bosses because they were just... DPS um, and our raid lead was basically just like dodge this and then you're fine DPS down um, 
until we got to the butcher the butcher had a huge cleave effect that was like if it hits the the raid it wipes and um again we could never get it it took us like two months to beat the butcher um and eventually after that we'd we'd finally like got into the final boss um throughout this entire time if it wasn't andy doing hunter pulls it was also drac who we had an, an in-game meme for of oh this is our third uh our third tank because he was playing a frost dk and he would just run in and pull um it it used to start as like he he pulled once as as an accident um in a couple of fights because like he wasn't sure where to stand and then it just became a meme where one of us usually me because i like to fuel the fire would be like yo drac go pull <laughs> And then we'd all cheer it on and it became funny, but he did it every single pull. And it was just like the tanks were always out of position. And it, I, it went from being funny to just being a hindrance to the raid. Um, and we'd, we'd finally wiped uh, normal high mall after about two months of grinding, like every single weekend, Saturday, Sunday, just grinding, trying to get through it. Uh, we would struggle at Butcher every single weekend, and after we beat Butcher, we would struggle at the final boss every single weekend. I think Morgak was his name or something. He was like a uh, Ogre Mage or something. I don't remember. Um, it's been so long uh, since I've entered High Mall because of this guild, but I digress. Um, so after we beat Normal, instead of doing what a normal progression guild would do and move into Heroic High Mall, Everyone's like, we don't want to touch High Mall anymore. We're going to Black Rock Foundry. And Black Rock Foundry was not where we needed to go. Um, and things started getting really bad um, because of all the constant wiping and, you know, like failing in normal Black Rock Foundry while Mythic, high, uh, Mythic Citadel had been out for over a year. Um... It was just like people were constantly leaving the guild to move on to better guilds. Um, our GM had also been known for being toxic in raids and in dungeons. So if we get any pugs in to like help fill our lobby if people weren't showing up to raids, um, then she would flame them and kick them out if they did one thing wrong. Like if they fucked up one pool, they were gone. It, in dungeons, she was known for doing hunter stuff, running through, pulling the entire dungeon, feign death, and then flaming the tank for not being able to tank it all. Um, so it basically, the, the guild name left a bad taste in anyone's mouth in that server. Anytime someone saw it, it was like, oh god, here we go. Um, so as we were losing more people, we were struggling to get more people because of that fact. Um, and all the people still in the guild fell like we were walking on eggshells, trying not to piss her off. And then suddenly one day she just up and left. Um, she she spoke to Susie and I and said, hey, I'm going going on a break for a couple of weeks, um, giving you guys like uh, semi-control of the guild for a bit. And we're like, yeah, cool. That's fine. Like, you need a break. You need a break. Um, and then she just never came back. Anytime we tried reaching out for her, we never heard back from her. So we're like, she's gone. Um, and this is where the domino effect of things begins. Um, it started with her leaving. Um, and then Emily and Justin, who I mentioned previously, um, they sent me a Facebook message because we did a lot of our like correspondence through Facebook because Discord wasn't huge back then. Um, and... This was like a couple weeks after, or like a couple of days after I'd kicked them from the guild. And they sent me a message, it's like, hey, no, she kicked me from the guild, why, what's up? And I, I'm like, look, I didn't want to do it, I, but I didn't want to get kicked from the guild, so I did what our tyrannical GM did. And I feel bad for kicking them, because all they did was didn't show up to a, a raid one night. Half the guild didn't show up for the raid that night, but... Because Andy didn't like Emily, um, I, it, it just went that way. So um, she's like, okay, that's fair enough. Like, I don't hold it against you, but I thought I'd share this to you. And she sent me a link to a Facebook page. 
and his Facebook page is some lady in America, but all the photos in, in, on that person's Facebook page were the same ones that Andy was using for her Facebook page. Now, this started rolling like questions in the guild because I'm like, so Andy had always told us that she lived in England and that she was dating one of the girl, one of the other girls in the guild. Um, but every time we were in Discord call together, uh, she would use a chat, uh, a voice changer, and we all knew it was a voice changer because it sounded like a freaking robot. Um, but she always just said that it was a horrible mic, and then this showed up, and it's just like, so she said that she's dating a woman and she lives in London, but this Facebook profile. Um, is of some lady in America who has kids in a family. So we're like, um, what the hell's going on here? I sent the message to her, hoping she would respond, and she's like, oh, yeah, that's like my real thing. I just like don't use a different profile. I like I use a different profile for gaming to like keep my real life out of it. I don't know how they found it. I'm like, hmm, seems sus, but you know, I'm not one to judge. I was like. 18 at the time, maybe 17, 18. So, yeah, I I was like, yeah, fair, no, that's all right. Um, but it still left questions in the guild, and and then from there, after she disappeared, after that happened, more people were leaving because we couldn't crew together enough people for raids. Um. And then we couldn't grow more people. And eventually, um, it started uh, rifts between the people still in the guild. So by the, sorry, uh, by the time uh, Legion pre-patch had dropped, there was like five active people left in the guild. There was myself, Susie Howdy, Paul Drones, and Ricky. Um, and then the infighting got super worse um, because uh, Ricky basically stated that he didn't want to be... He, he wanted to be in charge because he had a strict way that he wanted to run it. He wanted to turn it into a hardcore raiding guild and he wanted to recruit people. Um, and Susan and I wanted to keep it how it had been. And... Um, Eventually, it was just like this giant rift between Susie and myself and Ricky. And Ricky eventually left, so it was left to Susie and myself. And eventually, Paul stopped playing. So it was just Susie, myself, and Howdy left in this guild after being like this huge, massive guild that I think at our peak, we had like 400 people in the guild, and there was always at least actively 20 people. Granted, a lot of those 400 were alts, so we probably had maybe 50 players on at any time or like in the guild at any time and 20 of those were actively on at all times um so it came to the point where i'm like our guild is dying i have to make a choice i either have to stick it out and try help grow this guild again or i have an offer from another guild on another server with my twitch friends and i'm like hmm so I tried, I did try for like two weeks. I tried just getting one more member was enough to keep me like, cool. If we have one more active member, that means that we can get someone. But between all the infighting, all of the bad name that our guild had had on that server, um, it eventually just, I, I couldn't get anyone. Um, so I had the heartbreaking decision of leaving. I remember it very well. I was sitting in the Druid class order hall because uh, Legion had finally launched. Um, I was sitting at the portal to teleport back to Dalaran. And I basically just said to Susie, because she was on at the time, I'm like, I'm going to have to leave. Like I'm like, I I've tried to grow this and I, I wish I didn't, but... I've got friends that want to, want me to play on another server and you know I'm like I'll leave alts in in this in this guild but I'm taking my my rogue and my druid uh who were my two mains um to the other server so 
I probably won't be on too often. And it was a heartbreaking thing. I'm pretty sure I cried. Um, and then I moved my characters over to Barfalus and joined um, another guild, which ended up ending in very similar uh, circumstances. So if you want to story about that one, let me know because that's an interesting one. And it's also, I have more info on it because it's fresher in my mind um, as it was like only just uh, Legion BFA. So it was only like four or five years ago. Um, but yeah, so basically I uh, moved to this other guild and then that guild died and I floundered around, you know, jumping between servers and guilds for a while, but I could never find that one. You know, I either would find a guild and I'd find a couple of people that I like really match with, but then those people would leave and then I was like, okay, cool. I don't talk to anyone in this guild anymore. Or I would try communicate with people in the guild and I just get ignored because I was newer in the guild. And I'm just like, okay, I just, I don't anymore. So I um eventually decided, I came back in Shadowlands and I eventually decided, I'm like, hey, I wonder whatever happened to Ironforged. So I returned in Shadowlands and I'm like, I wonder where Ironforge landed. Like, did it die? Did it even still exist? Did it grow? Whatever. And I found it on WoW Armory and I saw that there was only one person left in there and that was Hawk. And now I remember Hawk being in the guild when it was like starting, but I don't think they ever had a main in there. It was just some alt characters that we picked up. Um, and I reached out to him a couple of times beforehand. Um... Um, but when I came back to Shadowlands properly, I like sent them, uh, I'd realized that they had, I had them in my battle.net friends list. Oh, okay. So I reached out to him, sent him a message. I'm like, Hey, do you, are you the Hawk that has control over Ironforge guild on, uh, Southang? And they're like, yeah. Um, why? What's up? And I'm like, so this is going to sound strange, but I was one of the original founders of that guild and I want to know what it's going to cost to buy that off you. And he's like, all right, here's the deal. Um, I, I totally understand that you want it. I don't have any like interest in the guild. I just use it as a build gang, uh, build gang <laughs> as a guild bank. So if you gave me another guild, with the same amount of slots, which I think was six, um, then I'll give you I'll give you this guild. So I went went and did that. I got a charter, paid people a thousand a thousand gold each to um, to sign the charter. Once I signed it, bought enough guild tabs, and then we transferred the guild over. Um, I transferred it to my main server. Uh, at the request of a friend that I was playing at the time, we re renamed the guild from Ironforge to Putrid, um, which, as much as I love the Putrid name, uh, I regret losing the Ironforge name. But again, I wasn't really attached to the name, more the the guild itself, like all the memories, all the achievements. I can go through and look at the achievements that we got as a guild and be like, I remember that we did that because I was there for a lot of it, especially the... Uh, heirloom pants because i was all into alts and heirlooms and i'm like i want heirloom pants so we're gonna farm them and i don't care how <laughs> and all we needed was um skinning so i went and i farmed 700 skinning on Dranor because i wanted um i wanted those pants and no one wanted to do skinning so i'm like i'll do it <laughs> took me like three days but i did it <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I still have control of this guild now. Um, it has been about six years since the guild officially died and I hope to restore it to its former glory eventually. I just need to find some time to get in and play WoW again, to be honest. Um, but yeah, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tale. If you have any stories of your WoW guilds, put them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. And if you want to hear about the other story of, about my next guild, let me know and I'll add it to the list of videos that I have planned. Um, but anyway, thanks so much for watching, guys. I apologize for the video being late, but I promise that next week, 6 p.m., or this week, I guess, uh, Sunday, 6 p.m. Shiny Santa time, 
every single week i will be a new video so hit like if you like this video hit subscribe if you want more content from me and i will see you guys in the next video good afternoon good night and goodbye much love stay awesome